what's up everybody and welcome to ITG Daily, the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news. I'm Drew Bosley, you can find me on Twitter at ArtisticGamer28, and that's the one the only, Scott Savage. You find him on Twitter at Savage. Scotty, what's happening today? <laughs> Dude, how's the weekend? I'm going to keep it going. We're almost done at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to next weekend, actually. <laughs> it's almost a weekend now at this point, isn't it? We're too far away from Sunday. I That's can't a... even remember. It. It's in the past. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, uh, everybody should be joining us live over on twitch.tv slash the official ITG as well as YouTube. But if you can't join us live, hit us up later inside the game.ca podcast services and TV streaming networks around the globe scott coming up on today's show PUBG's creator brandon green leaves crafton to start a new studio tokyo games show is coming back and it's going digital once more and games more games and more games are coming to game pass <laughs> yeah that's a uh, constant but that never we changes have some, we have some news on which those titles are going to be yeah we should tell them probably uh, maybe if you're lucky we'll see we might just pass it over no we're not going to do that all right let's get going because brandon player unknown green leaves crafton to form a new studio PUBG parent will hold a minority stri- uh, stake in green's new company brandon green best known for cur- the creator of player unknowns battlegrounds has founded a new independent studio once again using his online moniker the company is called are you ready for this scott player unknown productions <laughs> that's about as creative as my names are <laughs> and is based in amsterdam <laughs> netherlands where green has been for the last two years dude he's uh honestly he has nothing to show us but he started a new studio it's <laughs> he goes today i'm excited to take the next step in my journey to create the kind of experience i've dude this is such a weird word and i've seen it twice today envisaged for years have you ever even used that word ever no uh, how is that even written <laughs> uh, so, so i had to look it up man because i like this is the second time i saw it today and i was like what is this so it's like a, like he envisioned this is what he's envisioned for years i'm like what a word but either way again i'm thankful for everyone at crafton for supporting my plans and i'll have more to reveal more about our project at a later date really dude's got nothing uh, he's just got nothing it's a, gonna be an open world game which he's obviously known for for him when creating players unknown like play PUBG, dude set the whole world on fire creating this battle royale experience and it's just opened up the opportunities for a lot of things dude PUBG is still one of my favorite battle royale games yeah actually we mentioned that a couple days ago now i've yeah. been itching to go back it's ah, one that's nice just, has a specific memories to me yep. whether apex is better or not is just kind of irrelevant <sighs> this this is interesting news but I have to ask you the question. Okay. How do you find this bit of news uh, comparing to Dr. Disrespect slipping his normal stuff to start a new <sighs> development studio? That was something that came up maybe two weeks ago now. But yeah, it's a, well, for, first of all, uh, Brandon Green knows how to make games. Dr. Disrespect <laughs> just knows how to be a jerk so he knows how to make headlines yeah uh, right that's the that's the difference uh i am not a fan of uh doctor disrespect and that is just me personally i i'm just i don't even know the guy right honestly at all honestly i just i don't know him but from what i've seen his personality on twitch and stuff and how that's kind of unfolded i've just never really kind of gravitated towards that personality i've always kind of just gone that's not for me i'll let somebody else kind of watch him and take care of his stuff but for me i just rather go over here and i'll stick with brandon green and dude i'm curious to see what he creates next i'm looking forward to uh what opportunities he's going to bring because if he's the creator of one genre already is he going to be the creator of another one? Oh, that's an interesting thought yeah it's well unfortunately for him among us is already on the planet so <laughs> Twice, if you want to come up with another, yeah. <laughs> or do you just, or do you just look to Fortnite, and take, a, take revenge, copy now, it back? <laughs> I'm curious, as like, what do you think he's working on? Is it going to be a story based? Because he now you also see PUBG working into other things too, right? Their next si- title is going to be heavily invested into the story. They're working on more IPs within the world of PUBG. So where does Brandon go from here? Yeah, maybe this is something related, but uh, due to licensing or creative ideas, maybe yeah. that's why he's separating. There, 
I'm sure there'll be more coming down soon, but any development of his is going to be quite some time out still. Oh, absolutely. We were probably not going to see anything, right? He's been, so he's been at his new location for about two years, which probably tells me we're sitting at about another two years before we see anything of it, right? Yeah, conceptual or otherwise. Exactly. And it's also known there that he said PUBG is still the parent minority stakeholder within his company. So he's still there. They're still involved. They're all, they're still connected, which is nice. It's probably a good thing because that allows him to dip into bigger pockets to help fund his new studio as well. Right? Yeah. I have a feeling that's what it was mostly about. I think it's a smart move. I think that's cool. So I'm definitely curious waiting and uh, we'll wait to see what he has next. But what's coming up this year is the games Tokyo game show for 2021 schedule and lineup has been revealed. Dude, there's a lot going on here, but the things to highlight the most really is the presentations coming out from Xbox, Square Enix, Ubisoft, Capcom, Konami, Miho, Mihio, and more will be live stream nearly every hour starting on September 30th. Starts at 10 o'clock with the opening of the whole festivals. And then from there, dude, there's just a rambling of stuff for days. Yeah. Right. That's uh, it, it's, it's almost too much to list. It would just be nauseating at that point. But Konami is the, the standout, I think. Really? Eh? In, in my wonder, I'm just wondering what are they going to have? Konami, I think is in a lot of different things, but another pachinko hey, machine. Well, <laughs> will Kojima have, any spot during this whole thing at all is uh, i don't is know he hoping to avoid it i wonder no is we'll there any is there any uh like con that he can skip or do you think he's just contractually <laughs> obligated to be at everyone no i don't think we'll see him here i don't think uh, it, it does make a lot of sense for him to be there right but you don't see him listed here either you don't see kojima productions there whatsoever who you do see those like the the ones i did name off the top but then you get into uh, SNK, right? So we're getting into some fighting stuff right there. Uh, oh. Bandai Namco, level five, Sega is there. But you don't see, I, I don't see. There's KO Tecmo, which is, which is cool. Konami does. Square kind of, Enix. So, I'm looking forward to Square Enix, actually. If you show me any yeah. of that Final Fantasy. Uh, what are they on to now? 16? I uh, believe they are, Fi- right? Final Fantasy 28? Whatever. <laughs> just show me it. <laughs> yeah, they're working on another one. That's for sure. So there's a lot going on. Tokyo Game Show is always a unique experience, um, but it is all digital. That's the biggest thing. Again, once again, it's back there. It's going to be a digital forefront. There's 44 programs live streamed over the course of four days. Dude, it's busy. That is a big one. This has always kind of been a, the Eastern E3 yeah but it, they've since in you know the last five years i think they've done a little bit more to differentiate themselves but we of course can't get all the way over to tokyo so being an online venue is actually very advantageous for us absolutely noted here on the october 3rd i think it's the third or second hang on i'm looking for it I saw it two seconds ago, man. Ubisoft is there for, for their own thing, which is kind of a weird. Uh, here it is I'm on the third. third. Yep. Ubisoft UB Day 2021 online, a TGS special program. What is that containing, you think? Like, what is Ubisoft up to? I can I can only think of what it will not include. Oh, you had to, <laughs> eh? You had to go there, Scott. Uh, we are reminded daily. <laughs> Could you imagine they announced Splinter Cell there? <laughs> oh, if I see Michael Ironside, I will scream at the top uh, of my lungs. For sure. I will attempt to backflip. Once again, though, Scott, Xbox, they're at another conference, right? Mm-hmm. That's one thing. And then where's PlayStation? Nowhere. Dude, they're still yeah. not there. So but that's a curious one for me because this being Tokyo, I thought this was generally what they leaned towards instead of E3, but yeah, it seems like they have their own thing planned. I assume they must, right? Do you think we're going to see another state of play before the end of the year? Because they really don't have much left to show in the in the world of new launches or any releases. We're getting Deathloop here this month. We're getting Kena Bridge of Spirits this month. After that, there really isn't anything else lined up. You think they're waiting for a state of play to announce something? We just recently saw Horizon Forbidden West get delayed till February. So yeah. like, what's in the lineup now? What else are we going to expect to see? And I'm kind of curious now. I'm running down kind of just off the top of my head. What else is in the Sony PlayStation lineup for this fall? It's all third-party stuff. Yeah, there's there's not a whole lot of things that are sticking out to me right now. But I hope they would have some sort of an update, even if it's just to maintain presence. 
at a Tokyo Game Show or, or otherwise. But yeah. it could be a, a check-in with Horizon. How are these other projects going at the moment? Maybe some reassurance that other things aren't being delayed. Um, one thing that would be very welcome to me is any sort of property in the, in the name of um, Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, they, good point. They really just have to show that <laughs> opening screen and then Sony, everybody. Uh, man, yeah, wow. That would be... I don't think that'll happen. I don't, I don't think we'll ever <laughs> see another Shadow of the Colossus game whatsoever. Uh, we saw uh, uh, Ico, and then from there, we got Shadow of the Colossus, and then after that, we had The Last Guardian, which took like a decade to produce as it was. They went through like development hell <laughs> to get that game out the door. Yeah. So I don't see us getting any more anything like that and we've seen those studios too like sony closed a lot of those studios down and now they have the latest studio that works on astrobot going and taking over and they're that's kind of like their leading charge over there right now so it's um, it's an interesting spin on on events of where they started with such unique and and craftable characters and such world building that then to just move over to Astro Boy or Astro Bot, sorry, which is an incredible experience. But Astro Bot on the PS5 is a tech demo, which showcases the PS5 incredibly well, right? It's remarkable to think of all the features you have to play. If you have a PS5, you have to play Astro Bot. It is just one of those experiences that go, well, man, I didn't even know that this console could do that or this controller was capable of doing this, right? So then you kind of get into the next sequence of games that you play and like Returnal comes to mind for me instantly every time because, dude, you can feel the raindrops in the controller. Like it was just sequences like that, right? That's so awesome. (laughs) You get a rumble over on the xbox side of things but you get like the rain drops in your hands when you're doing and you were pulling the trigger halfway and then unloading when you pull the rest of the way it's just there's oh man ratchet and clank is another one comes to mind it's incredible we need we need those tech demos for the newest generation because there isn't the the launch lineup to kind of do that returnal is one ratchet is another but sure especially on xbox side what is there really to show there's some that have graphical advancements but that's all we've seen really i'm over the age of 20 now all these graphics just look the same to me i can't (laughs) pick the the pixels out from i can't get my eyes prior it's really not the same yeah and yeah uh, no i'm I'm still thinking about shadow of the colossus i think the best bet for anything like that is to hold off another decade for the remasters oh you know it's gonna happen yeah (laughs) you're probably right honestly you're probably right we're gonna (laughs) we're gonna get them next gen 4k experience 8k by that time scott let's get into (laughs) more xbox content as we get into what games are coming to game pass there's a couple that are coming and there's a bunch that are leaving so here we go craftopia dude which actually looks really really cool final fantasy 13 signs of genure uh surgeon simulator 2 crown trek breath edge nuclear throne and the artful escape are coming the artful escape looks like one weird bizarre experience that one <laughs> looks really weird well, uh, i i like on game pass because i can try it out no exactly no investment i mean other than the monthly but that's already a given anyways and yeah. surgeon simulator though that may be the <laughs> most solid simulator game i've read the title of in quite a long time now that's no gas station simulator. <laughs> no surgeon simulator is a is a comical blast but i'm still i'm still waiting for vending machine uh, uh simulator dude what did i see today uh ranch simulator i think it was i think i got it <laughs> i kid you not it's what i saw today oh, that sounds a little more advanced than lawn mowing oh, simulator. Lawn mower simulator there really is no shortage of simulator we can do this for minutes <laughs> It just seems to be nonstop. It's so weird, man. I just, I don't get it. But, but of course, when we get new games, which means others are leaving like Red Dead Online. E man, no, That's don't. A big hit. Yeah. We're actually going to be uh, playing that one here shortly for the show um, to play company of heroes as well. The sky of four for horizon or horizon Forza. Dude, I'm hooked on for horizon forbidden <laughs> West. Now Forza Motorsport <laughs> seven hot shot racing, the uh, dark, the Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance Tactics, and Thornbreaker, The Witcher Tales. Uh, Nate and I checked that one out. Dude, it was not the Witcher experience I was really looking for. That one was hard. Oh, man. okay. I was just about that to was, ask you about tough. that because I, I am curious on that. Uh, same as the Dark Crystal. I've been looking at that for quite some time, but it seems that I've waited too long now. It's you know, uh, about a week. 
Yeah, it is weird. To go, uh, you know, <laughs> I could maybe do it. Uh, Hot Shot Racing was one that I had jumped into more yeah. recently. Nice. And I was enjoying that, so I'm kind of sad to see that go. Dude, Red Dead Online is one of those games I will it will not leave my console. Like it's just, it oh. is there permanently. I don't want to ever Actually, delete it. Mostly because I don't want to download right it. Right now, it looks oh. like we're about uh <laughs> Well, eighty percent done. Uh, that's been oh. on for a week now. That'll almost that's... be ready. <laughs> Scott, why don't you take the next article, buddy? All right. Well, Resident Evil has a title. Welcome to Raccoon City. That is the new movie that is being developed at the moment. And the casting choices seem to have leave or sorry, seem to have left some longtime fans confused. It has many adaptations in the series. And there is always creative freedom to deviate from the source material. But the changes in this case have turned some heads. Um, Characters Leon, Jill, and Claire have been revealed, but the internet was set alight with their opinions on these characters. Always. (laughs) (laughs) There is one main group that felt like the reboot looks good, everybody's excited for it, and that team. And then there's another group of people that are really questioning the actors that are put into the roles. And I can understand that, especially from a standpoint of the anime adaptations I've seen. Sure. Now, Cowboy Bebop is the hot type, hot title right now that everybody's discussing. But when it comes to Resident Evil, it seems like it would be a little more forgiving. But there have since been... I'm trying to find the actors' names here. Ah, here we go. Avon... Yogia, I think that's how you say that, is set to play Leon Kennedy. Hannah John Kamen is Jill Valentine in this title. And, oh, I believe that's it. I can't find any mention of another. I thought there was another one there, but. I don't see it. Well, in any case, (laughs) they've shown two of these characters some people are really liking it some people aren't feeling it sure. i think that's a natural response to anything in this always kind of thing. but i'm still looking forward to this the uh the director has been quoted as saying I'm sorry i just want to make sure i get this right <laughs> i think often in-game adaptations one of the big flaws can be just casting someone to look visually like the characters giving them an identical haircut, clothing, but it's not really trying to give the audience the thing that the movie does better than the game, which is to create a three-dimensional character that you can really connect with and believe in. I think, as I said before, one of the traps of falling into game adaptations is to make it feel like a giant cosplay version of the game. He went on further to say, our cast is obviously much more diverse than the original games, but I wanted to resist the trap of just casting someone because they happen to look like their character identically. We actually had a lot of actors who came in and recreated themselves perfectly visually as the character they were reading. It was uncanny at times, but it was not what I felt the story needed. He goes on to into some further details, but the yeah. idea behind that is just they're, they're making a movie here. It's not supposed to be just a copy of Resident Evil 2. It's something to stand on its own. Dude, which makes a lot of sense, right? Like, we recently saw that even in video games with Marvel's Avengers, take a, with Crystal Dynamics oh, yeah. taking their own spin on what their version of Iron Man looks like, right? Or with Thor and oh, Black Widow. Iron Man that's so, not Robert Downey Jr. How do you do that? It, but after a certain <laughs> while, right, it kind of, you get it, and then it works, and it just kind of, that's Iron Man for me right now, anyways, right? Because okay. it, it you play it enough, and then that that's memory kind of wears off, right? Uh, of Junior kind of being the Iron Man, the one and the only, really, right? But when you yeah. get into it, yeah. When you get into their own version that Crystal Dynamics has worked on for Marvel's Avengers, dude, it really worked. Like, after a while, you get past that idea of, okay, well, I, all right, well, nope, now it is Nolan North, and that's who's voiced is Iron Man, and it works really well, and it pays off, and it works as their own IP in a sense then, instead of trying to match everybody else, and then you're just constantly compared the entire time. Yeah, that's true, because if it's an uncanny resemblance, then it's just going to be distracting the entire time. Exactly. And this is hopeful that these actors can move on from these roles and somebody else can fill them properly. I think of Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, and I can't think of anyone else at the moment. 
But yep. the same thing happens to Wolverine and Hugh Jackman. Sure. Will there ever be another Wolverine? Is that uh, even possible? But <laughs> to your point, with Marvel Avengers, you can get past that. It is possible. Yep, absolutely. We should get past uh, on to what game releases are out today, Scott, as well as some announcements. Because, dude, there's a lot of announcements today. Yeah, there is quite a lot of things here. So let's, let's, let's see rolling. if we can't hit them all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There is No Man's Sky, the Frontiers update. That is the 17th major free update. Holy <laughs> to No Man's Sky. Wow. And it is now available on all platforms as the game. That's awesome. This features you becoming an observer of your own procedurally generated alien settlement. This actually sounds quite interesting. Uh, I While know. in this position, you will make choices, guide your citizens, develop new structures, and defend your people from the Sentinels. You can also take advantage of the massive overhaul to build bases, construct your own buildings entirely. And there are many patch notes that have been published for the update, and they include a lot of changes to settlements, base building, of course, visual improvements, a new save system that they're doing, some quality of life things, yeah. and a lot of bug fixes that are... Dude, it's incredible. Squashed. That game is still going. I, yeah, kind of, it's one of those... Is it too late to jump in? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> I've been struggling with that for years. <laughs> I, I come from Elite Dangerous, though. So yeah. we kind of, it's it's like a Coke versus Pepsi thing. And us yeah. on Elite Dangerous look down on No Man's Sky. Uh, I don't know if that's fair anymore. It's, I don't think so. I really I don't think so. I discounted it at the beginning. Yeah. I, Sean Murphy lied to me. That's <laughs> and the whole world. But they've since done a lot to redeem themselves. I, I think really they have. have to let go of that opinion absolutely time to move on and i think we gotta give it another shot i think we do it looks uh let's look back at the game and check it out again but what else do we have scott because man <laughs> we have an announcement from obsidian entertainment and private division on Eridanos, I think I have that right. I think so. Don't pronounce much Greek. Uh, <laughs> the second and final DLC, that is, for The Outer Worlds on Nintendo Switch, and it will release September 8th. Murder on Eridanos, that is the title, the full title. It will be available on the eShop for about $15, and as a standalone purchase, or you can get it through the expansion pass. It will also be available on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series S, X, PS4, Xbox One, and PC all together. Now. Nice. I'm glad to see that game supported still because uh, that's I mean, cool. That was a good one. That stood out to me. Without getting too far into a review. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We do have a review published if you'd like to check that out. Scott, what games are out today, buddy? Yes, when it comes to full releases, we have. El Shaddai, Ascension to the Metatron. That's on PC. Okay. <laughs> Curious name that. We have Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous on PC. WRC 10 on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, X and S. And we have Rico London, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch. And lastly, Surgeon Simulator 2, <laughs> Access All Areas there you on go. Steam, Xbox One, and X and S. That is it. Dude, what a, that's a busy lineup today, man. Holy crap. <sighs> I was surprised. Surgeon Simulator was actually a VR game when it first uh, was released. Yeah, actually, I've seen a lot of clips of that. It seems like a, <laughs> a fun time. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty hysterical. Or very stressful, depending on <laughs> how you re react to those things. <laughs> Well, Scott, that's going to wrap up today's show. Everybody, this has been ITG Daily, the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news. Of course, you can always join us live over on twitch.tv slash the official ITG as well as YouTube. But if you can't join us live, hit us up later inside the game.ca podcast services and TV streaming networks around the globe. I'm Drew. That's Scott. We'll see everybody tomorrow inside the game.